Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Evans, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Inboard Technology. Uh, I'm going to get into what we do in a second. But first things first, I just want to start off with this picture. Uh, I searched the internet for a while, and this was the best picture I could find that basically sums up the way we currently get around urban areas in pretty much every Western society. Uh, the way that we currently get around urban environments is inefficient, it's inconvenient, and most importantly, it's uncomfortable. If you look at this guy, he's just trying to find his zen state. The only way he can get from there to wherever he's going is to close his eyes and pretend he's not where he currently is. And this is unfortunately the way that almost the majority of people in Western countries get to and from work on a daily basis. We've designed our cityscapes around a car, an appliance. The place that we live and we call home is mostly designed around how well we can use an appliance. Uh, and to us, that doesn't make any sense at Inboard or a lot of the companies that are working on completely disrupting and changing the way we get around urban areas. So before we get into what Inboard does, I wanted to quickly just touch, if you could imagine a vehicle that's electric, that's huge. We all know that electric's taking off. That's green, not only green in use, but green in manufacturing and also the recyclability of the product as well. Also, lightweight. Lightweight is huge. Uh, when you're talking about a product that can really easily transform where you live every day. Uh, and lastly, a vehicle that can go anywhere. And when I say go anywhere, I truly mean go anywhere, from a crowded elevator to you know, underneath a restaurant table. So when I say all those things, what do you think of? Does it look like that? So this is our flagship product. This is called the M1, and it's an electric skateboard. Now, when I say a vehicle, most people don't think of a skateboard. Let me turn it around so you guys can see kind of all angles here. So what we've done is we've actually built in motors inside the wheels of the skateboard, and we use the same battery technology that you would find in a Tesla to create a product that really easily gets around an urban landscape. So rideable technologies is this brand new frontier of lightweight electric vehicles. And when we say lightweight, we usually cut it off at around 25 pounds, around you know, 12 and a half, 13 kilos. Uh, and you can see, I've got right here our flagship product, the M1. But I think everybody's seen these two things, these two wheel devices rolling around. They literally and figuratively blew up at Christmas time this past year. Um, and they really put rideable technology on the map. So rideable technology can take many different forms, factors, shapes. You can see here you've got a one-wheeled skateboard. You've got rocket skates that you would strap onto each feet, even a uniwheel, a one-wheel, and this is an ultra-lightweight bike. So rideable technology is this brand new category that's lightweight electric vehicles that you can take with you. And when I say take with you, the reason that we don't really count electric bikes in this rideable technology framework is because they're too big and they're too heavy to really be able to go into a restaurant, to go into a crowded elevator full of 11 people and be able to ride it up easily. If you were to do that with a hoverboard or even with the electric skateboard here, you can see I can easily take it into an elevator, I could go up an escalator, and I can even put it underneath a table when I go out to eat with friends, go to a restaurant. So it really fits into your everyday life. And that's what rideables give you. They give you freedom. Freedom to go wherever you want, whenever you want. And what does freedom actually look like? The freedom to jump into an Uber or a taxi with all of your friends after work on a Thursday night, that's something that your friend with a bike isn't afforded. If everybody wants to go out for drinks after work, if you're the one guy with the bike, you've got to schlep it all the way across town and meet your friends there. When you have a rideable, you can just get in the car with them. And so if you're riding down the street and it starts pouring rain like it did today, you can easily hop into a pub, stop in a local bookstore. And so the product really fits with you. And again, it's not only the fact that it can go a long distance, that it can reach speeds comparable to the fastest bicyclist or a slow car, uh, but really the form factor that gives you so much freedom. So Oslo, Milan, Dublin, Paris, Madrid, Brussels, Copenhagen, Helsinki, and Hamburg are all actively working to ban cars from their city centers. If you live in London or you've been in downtown London, you know the city tax, you know that it's extremely expensive. Excuse me? Could you hand me that water down there? Thanks. Um, and so all these cities are working together, so by 2019 they can phase out vehicles from their city centers. So I'm building this big picture, but it's really difficult to see how all these things can fit together. How can you get rid of cars in a city center? How is this thing safe to ride in an urban environment? 
And lastly, autonomous vehicles, which is something that everybody's been hearing a lot about, those really play into this new framework of rideable technologies in our, our new city landscapes. So to kind of pull these together, right now there's not enough public space to ride a bicycle safely in the city, let alone all these new rideable technologies. Uh, in addition, driving a car is more expensive than taking public transportation. But through the convergence of three technologies happening right now, the electrification of vehicles, the sharing economy, and autonomy, we're going to completely change cities in the next 10 years. So those three things, electrification. When you make a car electric, all of a sudden, it becomes very, very affordable to, to use at mass scale. When you make the car autonomous, all of a sudden you can greatly reduce the number of cars on a city street. Because rather than multiple cars driving, taxis, picking people up, they're all doing one thing, which is delivering a passenger to its final location. And then lastly, sharing. We're going to completely see a change in the way that we own cars, in that we're not going to own them. We're going to share them, just like you would an Uber or a taxi. You're going to get in and out of it at your leisure. And so when you combine those three things, uh, autonomy, electrification, and sharing, all of a sudden you greatly reduce the number of cars on city streets, and you greatly expand the availability of public spaces for recreating and for green space. And this is something that's hugely needed, definitely in America, but I think everywhere. And so as we start to see this new reality where you're taking autonomous vehicles to get to, get to work or to get longer distances, new technologies like Hyperloop, which are going to connect cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles uh, or Berlin to Paris at insanely high speeds, and the biggest thing is that the cost of, to use each one of these services is going to drop tremendously. So all of a sudden, walking, which is by far the cheapest form of transportation, it's also the slowest. And as you can see, the M1, which is right here, rideables, and other autonomous ele electric vehicles, lightweight rideables, are going to help bridge that gap between you leaving your front door and you needing to get into, into an autonomous vehicle to get across the city. So in the future, we used our product designer page to kind of hob together a couple of futuristic cityscape images. Uh, you can see you've got your Tesla Model X here, which is picking up and dropping passengers off autonomously. But the biggest thing is you've gotten rid of two lanes of traffic so that now you have two bike lanes or rideable technology lanes. And that's really where, how these products are being used and adopted. In safe bike lanes, uh, we're using the exact same laws, same top speed, same helmets, same infrastructure to really support the safe growth of the rideable technology market. And in the future, you're going to have much greener areas in your city centers and streets, much more access to public space, and an easier transportation option with way more solutions at your feet. So lastly, a couple things about inboard and what we've done here with the M1. Uh, we've created two in-wheel motors back here that we call the Manta Drive technology. So the motor actually sits inside the wheel right here. And then beyond that, we've actually built in swappable battery packs. So if you want to go 16 kilometers on one charge, you can, but then you can take a battery out of your back pocket, drop one back in, and you can keep riding. We've created a very intuitive remote that we call the Reflex Remote, so that you don't have to think about using our product when you're riding. You can open and close your hand, and thanks to the cool shape, you never have to worry about dropping it. We've created headlights and taillights so that you're safe when you ride at night. And we even have a mobile app that pushes notifications to your iPhone. So if there's a hazard in the road, you're going to get a heads up about it before you, you uh, encounter it. Lastly, we've built a full ecosystem around this product and rideable technology in general. Everything from our mobile app, where you can see your top speed, your range, set different modes, and even an Apple Watch application so that you can see your speed or get directions while you're riding. The big thing is that we want to build a community around these products and all these new technology and transportation solutions that we're finding in the future, because together, we can greatly change the way that we live in our urban environments and not have to be like this guy, just gritting it out on our way to and from work. So I want to thank everybody. I'm going to be doing an AMA uh, out by the river at uh, 445 today. And if anybody wants to give a try to the M1 or talk about rideable technologies, I'll be out there then. Brilliant. Awesome, Ryan. Really cool. Thank you so much. So um, we've got time for a few questions that everyone can listen into if you're fine with it. Yeah? How, who's up for asking a question? Who has a question for Ryan? I see a hand here. Hi. Uh, my question is about safety. Um, especially, I think in Berlin, uh, electric skateboards are forbidden. Correct me if I'm wrong. I heard that somewhere. Um, have you run, run into any uh, regulations? Um, Great question. 
Yeah, so I, I always found it interesting that if you look at companies like Uber and Airbnb, these companies broke the law because they realized that the current status quo was inefficient and broken. Uh, now, I'm not advocating for that necessarily, but in California, where three of the largest rideable technology companies are located, it was actually illegal to ride an electric skateboard up until October last year. Now, that's not to say you couldn't ride by five police officers in San Francisco and wave, and they'd be like, that's so cool. They didn't really know that it was uh, illegal, and it was because of an antiquated 1970s law. Um, together, working with these other rideable technology companies, we're actually able to go and change that law, and now electric skateboards are embraced everywhere in California, just like electric bikes. And so that's really the status quo that we're finding, is anywhere that you can use an electric bike, usually the same top speed, the same requirements like headlights and taillights at night, um, this is the way that we can make this product safe and really create a good environment for the adoption of it. So I think you're right. We're going to have to work collectively and as an industry to, to do that. Uh, and there's actually a couple other uh, founders of rideable technology companies here at the conference. And that's one of the things that we actively want to do. Great question. Brilliant. We've got time for one more question. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you one more time, if you have space next to you, you have a free seat, could you raise your hand? Because we have loads of people wanting to come in for the next session. OK, bring them in. There's space. <laughs> Yeah, keep your hand raised. Look out for people walking up and down the aisles because we want to get as many people in. No one should miss out if there's a space next to you, right? Brilliant. Okay, now, who has one more question for Ryan? Okay, we'll maybe have the hand waving because now we have hands for everything. <laughs> Do you? Sure. Hey, um, how did you come up with the idea? Um, have you been the guy in the public transportation? Is this <laughs> I, I was that guy in public transportation for a long time. I grew up in Chicago, spent the last couple of years in San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco, you get a lot of interesting smells when you're on the, uh, the public transportation system there. Uh, so the question was, how do we come up with the idea? Um, I think everybody has been there. You're walking across a campus, down the street, it's summertime, you're sweating, and you're just like, I wish I had something with me that would allow me to get there. I always wanted that when I was in university, and it wasn't until I met my uh, co-founder of Inboard, a uh, brilliant mechanical engineer named Theo Serbaneshi from France, that he was the one who actually made it happen. Uh, and the way that he kind of figured everything out was he was a huge drone uh, aficionado, and it was through using drones that he was able to you know, basically create the in-wheel motor system uh, that we've embraced and called Manta Drive today. Um, I think we're out of time for questions, but I wanted to just let you guys know, tomorrow during the Kickstarter um, uh, projects that they're unveiling, there's actually another company here called Mellow Skateboards. They're in Hamburg, uh, and they're actually going to be demonstrating some of their rideable technologies, too. So be sure to check that out as well. Brilliant. Thank you, Ryan. All right. Thank you.